confidence among investors, access to emergency funding. We can only do that if there's certainty and clarity about our future. The blackmail clause, the ball and chain of bank debt. There's always foreign against and everything we do. It was a question that the government really didn't want to have to put to us, but the legal advice was inconveniently definitive. The treaty on the fiscal compact would have to be ratified by referendum. We're now at the halfway point of that campaign. Just who is winning the war of words? A poll taken shortly before the formal campaign launch confirmed that a huge number of us remained to be convinced. With just 30% intending to vote yes and 23% intending to vote no, a massive 39% were still undecided. And so the political machine wearily cranked into action. There would be photo calls and business bashes, conferences, public meetings, canvassing, leafleting and postering. But even those pleading for a yes vote appeared to be damning the treaty with faint praise. It's a very basic treaty, it's a simple treaty. It agrees a set of rules in order to underpin confidence in the euro. For no campaigners, it was all about austerity and debt. To being ruled by the anger, the opposition that exists to austerity and the increasing confidence that people have to fight back. This is about the bank debt, stupid. We cannot ignore this. I mean, we, you know, people say, well, it's not the question. Well, it's the question that needs to be addressed here. <laughs> Pressing the flesh of the dynamic young entrepreneurs based in Dublin's digital hub, the Taoiseach's campaign strategy quickly becomes apparent. Accentuate the positive. I take the positive approach to this positive, confident message. I think that's very positive. People look at this in a very positive way. Meanwhile, canvassing the salubrious West Dublin suburb of Castle Knock, Michal Martin was at pains to stress the S word. It's safer to vote yes, more secure and safer option. Safer, more secure for me, the safer option is voting yes. But the United Left Alliance viewed the Yes campaign strategy in somewhat more threatening terms. A political gun to the head of the Irish people. Threat, a crisis, sacrifice, really serious attack. The first half of this referendum campaign has been dominated by events unfolding elsewhere in Europe. The rejection of austerity with the election of Francois Hollande in France. Angela Merkel's decision to delay ratification of the treaty because of local political difficulties in Germany. And perhaps most dramatically, the scenes of political and social crisis in Greece being relayed into our living rooms on a nightly basis. What to do with this onslaught of potential game changers? Ignore them, pleaded the Taoiseach. What the German people do, what the French people do, what the, what the people in Greece do, is their business. We are a member of the Eurozone. We signed this treaty on the 2nd of March. It's that treaty that we are asking people for their authorization and for their permission to ratify. But some outside influences would prove very persistent. We're a group of MEPs from across Europe, and we're saying to people, look, you're being asked to vote for a treaty that, given the crisis in the Eurozone, the terms of that treaty will have disappeared, probably by the time you even come to vote. On the other hand, the Yes site has seized on the Greek crisis as a timely cautionary tale. Remember that the route that uh, Greece has followed is the kind of route that some of the no campaigners are recommending for this country. That's not a direction that we want to follow. There's an interesting dimension to this, that the plight of the people in Greece has been, has been used in some way here. The, the Yes camp has only one argument, which is using, and that's the scar argument. It's just to frighten people. And, you know, whether or not that will succeed in getting the S vote remains to be seen on the, the May the 31st. Back in the digital hub, the Thetic is working hard to sell his positive message. He was very emphatically saying vote yes. He certainly seems confident that a yes it would be good for Ireland, but I'd prefer to look at all the facts myself before I make up my mind. I'll be voting yes. I feel quite strongly about that. I think it's the only option we have at the moment. I feel the yes vote is hardening. I think that's very positive. I think people are looking at the question that they have to answer, uh, which is about the future, the future of Ireland, the future of its economy, the future of our people. The yes vote did indeed appear to be hardening, according to the Red Sea opinion poll in the Sunday Business Post last weekend. It showed 53% now intended to vote yes, with 31% planning to vote no and 16% undecided. The, the big issue will be on the day, whether people are motivated to come out and actually cast their 
their vote. And there are lots of arguments to be had and lots of and information to be uh, given to citizens. So I'm, I'm very, very contented that there's all, all to play for. Most of the debate to date is centred around the crucial issue of access to funds, with Yes campaigners warning that a no vote could see Ireland left high and dry. The fact that the government has to keep repeating that threat, essentially putting a political gun to the head of the Irish people, uh, to demand that they vote yes, irrespective of the merits of what they're supposed to vote on, uh, to me it speaks of a, a very weak um, campaign by the government. A no vote would mean more cuts. A yes vote actually gives us an opportunity of cheaper money, cheaper than the alternative. So in many ways if you vote yes, you're voting for the prospect of um, a, a, a more um, modest approach to, to, to managing the economy. But to me it's just a very, very straight proposition that if we need uh, another bailout, we will get another bailout. I, I have no doubt whatsoever about that. It's this bailout. public meeting in Dundalk on Monday night was billed as a referendum briefing, but the emphasis was very much on the government's austerity policies. We've done about 71 of these meetings across the state. Tonight we have either seven or 11 meetings like this. 50% of households have boycotted the registration process. Now, what we're finding at public meetings is that a huge majority of those people are also opposed to the austerity treaty. And therefore, if that huge revolt against a new regime of taxes, which is a revolt really against austerity, if that is reflected, and I believe it will be, in the uh, voting on May the 31st, then it can have a powerful impact. I would say that that's particularly strong um, among, uh, what you might say, more working class voters. Um, that, that really comes up for mention almost every time. On the other hand, it's normally followed by, but we shouldn't cut our nose to spite our face. Today's Irish Independent Milward Brown poll indicated that the Yes campaign is still well ahead, with 37% voting yes and 24% voting no. But the key figure is the 35% who still don't know how they will cast their vote on polling day. The outcome of the referendum lies in their hands. This afternoon, the Yes campaign suffered its first serious gaffe. In a heated debate on Today FM's The Last Word, Jobs Minister Richard Bruton was pressed to reveal his plan B. I suppose we will have to say that we, need, we will need access to the, uh, this fund and I think Ireland will be looking to say, can we vote again? Because we will, we will need access to this fund. He later retracted the remark, but something simply can't be unsaid. How it plays with voters remains to be seen.